What's up guys, Dr. Jared Hall here, physical therapist in Fort Worth, Texas, and today I wanted to continue on with Trigger Point Tribulations Part 2, and I wanted to touch on the reliability of palpation and diagnosis of trigger points. So there are several criteria that's been proposed for the diagnosis of a trigger point. There's been localized twitch response, there's been pain referral patterns, there's been palpation of a taut or tender band. There's been a lot of different things proposed for the diagnosis of a trigger point. But when we look at blinded inter-rater reliability of one's ability to locate and palpate a trigger point, we see that the systematic reviews show we have a really, really poor ability to reliably palpate a trigger point when we're blinded to the patient telling us where it hurts or giving us feedback on if it hurts, which kind of calls into question the validity of the existence of the trigger point in general. So if we can't reliably find it and it doesn't seem to be an entity that can be palpated with our hands with good confidence, how can we accurately apply treatment to this questionable source of tissue dysfunction. A lot of people aren't familiar with the Fred Wolf study of 1992 where he looked at the reliability of trigger point palpation and one of the subjects in the study was actually Dr. David Simons who is one of the originators of the trigger point hypothesis. Then when we look at subsequent systematic reviews on reliability studies for diagnosis we see that methods for palpation studies are absolutely atrocious. Participants aren't blinded and the way that they set up the experiments are really poor because they actually allow patient feedback for pain and kind of prime the therapist on where the trigger point might be or where the side might be or just go based on a patient report of pain with palpation. And that doesn't necessarily indicate that we could actually have a trigger point there. So I want to ask you guys to kind of think critically about some of the methods that we go about using to treat these quote-unquote trigger points if I and you and Dr. David Simons and everybody else can't reliably find this magical taut and tight band in a patient's muscle without the patient directly saying, yes, that is my painful area, that is where I hurt. And then that opens up an entire can of worms for determining what actually is the cause of pain. To simply say that it's this possible, mythical, hypothetical, one millimeter by one millimeter um, dysfunctional neuromuscular junction, it could be a little bit extreme. And there, there's a lot of other explanations for why somebody might have pain in that area. And none of them are actually really confirmed. We're just throwing out hypotheses at this point. So... Next week, we will follow up with Trigger Point Tribulations Part 3, and we're going to go into a Delphi study that examines what expert opinions on trigger points actually are. So if you guys have any comments, post them down below. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.